All right, guys, it's time to go over the homework for understanding theoretical probability. Well, let's see in number seven, it says the spinner has eight equal sized sections. To win the game, the pointer must land on a yellow section. Well, the probability of landing on yellow is the favorable outcome over the total number of possible outcomes. Well, remember, we've got two possible outcomes that are favorable out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That pretty much tells me that it's going to be two over eight, and two over eight can be simplified to one fourth. Number eight says Natalie is playing a game using a fair coin. When we say fair, it means it's not one of those trick coins that has heads on each side. Contestants win the game if the fair coin lands tails up. The theoretical probability that the coin will land tails up is, well, a coin only has two sides, and if we want it to land on tails, it will land on it 50% of the time or half the time. If five or 250 contestants play the game, about 125 of them are expected to win. Why is it 125? Remember, we're talking about 250 divided by two. One half of 250 is going to be 125. Number nine says, in a different game, the probability of correctly guessing which of five boxes contains a tennis ball is one out of five. Well, that makes sense. There's one ball out of five boxes. About how many winners would be expected if 60 contestants play the game? Well, remember, that means we've got to go ahead and take see here. We're going to take uh, 1 out of 5 and equal it to x out of what? Well, remember, we said that there are going to be 60 contestants, so that would be 60. Now, remember, we've got to multiply 60 to this side to get rid of 60. Whatever I multiply to one side, I do to the other. That's 1 times 60 which is 60, and 60 divided by 5 is 12. So we can expect 12 winners. Next, we're going to do number 10. It says, make sense and preserve. A 12-sided solid has uh, equal size faces numbered 1 through 12. I guess that what they mean is uh, like a dice, a 12-sided uh, dice has equal sided faces uh, numbered 1 through 12. Now it says find the probability that the number will be greater than 10. Well, there's only two numbers greater than 10 with a range of 1 to 12, and that's 11 and 12. So that's two out of the 12 possibilities. And two out of 12 can be uh, also be written as one out of six. So I would say that answer is going to be one out of six. Find the probability of the number less than five. Well, that would be one, two, three, or four. That's four numbers out of 12. Well, if we take that, uh, that's going to be, can be reduced. Uh, four out of 12 can be reduced to uh, one out of three. If 12 sided solid is rolled, 200 times, how many times would you expect either four, six, or nine to be rolled? Well, that's three different numbers out of 12. So that's three out of 12. Three out of 12 can be rewritten as one out of four. Now we have to check, go ahead and see what it would be out of 200. I'm gonna use my pen here to write this one out. Uh, we would be taking, uh, let's see, we had, 3 out of 12, that's going to be equal to 1 out of 4. Now, if the cross multiply that, making it equal to some number out of 200. That means I'd have to multiply this side to 200. Whatever I multiply to one side, I have to multiply the other. That would be 1 times 200. That'd be 200 divided by four. 
Well, 200 divided by four is 50. So I'm thinking the answer is going to be 50. I'm going to have to erase this so you guys can see it, but I think I got my answer right. Yep, 50 times. All right. Tomorrow finds the sum of two number cubes rolled at the same time. Notice it said cubes, which means it's six sides. The chart below shows all possible sums from the 36 possible combinations when rolling two number cubes. How many times should Tamara expect the two sums of the two cubes to be equal to five if she rolls the two number cubes 180 times. Well, there's the sum, and here's the possible combinations. So, we should expect it to be about 20 times. Now, for those that didn't understand it, let's go do this. I'm gonna need my pen. Let's see here, I'm trying to bring it up, there we go. Uh, this could be solved by realizing that we're trying to get the number five. Remember, we want the cube to equal five. How many different ways can it equal five? Well, it says four. That's four out of, remember, 36 possible combinations. Well, now we have to go ahead and put that equal to what? Well, first of all, four can go into 36, right? We can divide, uh, well, if we divide them both by two, that would be two going into 18. And again, we can divide it by two, which would equal one over nine. Now we can take one over nine and cross multiply it to some number over 180. Remember, the X is going to be symbolizing the number of times we feel it will roll five out of 180. Well, we have to go ahead and multiply this side to 180 to get rid of it because we're dividing by 180. If we multiply by 180, we cancel it out and leave X. But whatever I multiply to one side, I have to multiply to the other side. Now I have 180 times one, that's 180, divided by nine. And 180 divided by nine is gonna give me 20. So my answer was 20. Shall we double check that to make sure? was our answer. All right, let's go on to our next one. It says here, high order thinking, a store is giving every customer who enters the store a scratch off card labeled with numbers from one to 10. It is, it is equally likely that any of the numbers from one to 10 will be labeled on a given card. If the card is an even number, the customer gets 15% discount on the purchase. If the card is an odd number greater than six, the customer gets a 30% discount. Otherwise, the discount is 20%. Hmm. Well, it looks like in either case, you get some type of discount, that's good. What is the probability of each discount? Well, what's the probability of getting the 15% discount? We said if it's an even number, right? That means about half of the time, you're gonna get the discount of 15%. Next, it talked about odd number greater than six. Well, what numbers are greater than six? Well, there's seven, eight, nine, 10. Remember, the numbers only go from one to 10. Well, seven, eight, nine, 10, that's three numbers. And that would mean uh, we're getting three numbers out of 
be possible, uh, let's see, well, three out of the possible 10. But if we think about it, remember it says an odd number greater than six. So really out of that seven, eight, nine, uh, let's see, greater than 10, seven, eight, nine, 10, that's seven and nine. That's only two numbers. So two out of 10 uh, can be reduced to one over five, which would give us one fifth. Uh, the last one says, otherwise the discount is 20%. All right, um, well, uh, if it's going to be not even and not an odd number that's over six, that's gonna leave, uh, let's see, six, uh, well, one through six, uh, and that's gonna be um, six over, oh, wait a second, no, that won't be six over 10. We're gonna have to reduce that again. We've gotta realize that they're saying again, all the even ones got took up here and all the odd ones greater than six here. So that really leaves us only all the odd ones uh, that are less than six. So that's gonna be one, three, and five. Uh, so that's only three numbers out of 10. So uh, for the 20% discount, we're looking at three out of 10. Uh, the store manager gives out 300 scratch off cards. Which discount uh, will the greatest number of customers likely receive? Well, the 15% discount, why? Using theoretical probability and proportional reasoning to make predictions for 300 customers, 150 of those customers will likely receive 15% discounts. 90 will likely receive 20% and 60 will likely receive 30%. Remember, we have to cross multiply this to the number which you're talking about is 300. Does everyone understand that? So in this case, we're talking 300 divided by two, that's 150. In this case, we're gonna be talking about uh, 300 uh, divided by five. And then the next case, we're talking about 300 times three divided by 10. Thirteen says a spinner is divided into four equal parts. One part is colored red, two parts are colored blue, and one part is colored yellow. Spinner is spun 1,000 times. Select all of the reasonable possible outcomes. Okay, uh, the spinner is divided into four equal parts. Let's go ahead and draw one out real quick. And it says uh, one part is colored red, two parts are colored blue. So we'll put this as blue. We'll make this one blue as well. And one colored is yellow. All right, the spinner spun 100 times, select all the possible outcomes. The spinner lands on blue 445 times. Let's see if that's true. Well, there are two of them that are blue. That's gonna be 50% of the time it's gonna land on blue because we've got two out of four, right? And two over four equals one half. So since we know it's gonna be one half of the time and we've got one half of 1,000 and one half of 1,000 will be uh, 500. So will the spinner land on blue 445 times? No, that is not the theoretical probability of it. Uh, let's see, select all reasonable possible outcomes. Oh, is it possible that it will land 445 times? Well, I guess it's possible. That's pretty close to 500. The spinner uh, lands on red 430 times. Well, there's only one red, so that's gonna be 1,000 divided by four, uh, and that's gonna be about 250. So theoretically, it's gonna land on blue 500 times. It's gonna land on red 250 times. And that means it's gonna land on yellow 250 times as well, just theoretically, of course. I doubt very seriously that we're gonna get 
uh, 430 of those times to be red when we're expecting about 250. So I'm going to say no to B for the second one. The third one says the spinner lands on blue 290 times. That's not very uh, likely either, since about half of the time is about 500. The next one says the spinner lands on yellow 200. Well, 200 is pretty close to 250. So I'm going to say, yeah, it could probably land there. The last one said the spinner lands on red 290 times. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty close to 250 as well. I'm going to say uh, the first one, uh, the fourth one, and the fifth one are more than likely the answers we're looking for. Look at that. Got it right. Number 14 says uh, there are 1,500 runners have signed up for the marathon. The probability of a runner finishing the race is 11 out of 25. Approximately how many runners are expected to finish the race? Well, remember, this is the probability of runners finishing the race. So that means we've got to take 1,500, multiply it to 11, and divide it by 12. When you do that, you're going to realize you have about 1,375 of those runners that are expected to win the race. Well, that's all for the homework tonight. Hope you had fun with it. And if you got any questions, remember to join me in the remediation period, which would be Tuesday and Thursday from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock or from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock. See you there.